Hello, this is H.C. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy Legend 3! We've got to find that float spell here in the North Tower, so let's take a look around. Got these little pits here, you can just uh, jump over them. If you walk right into them, then, uh, well, it won't end well. No, no, you'll get into, uh, you'll fall down to the previous floor. Now, when you've got, like, more than four enemies in a battle, it's a good idea to uh, start using some crowd control here. So let's use a sleep spell there. Get that on him. Uh, the robots on the left there, uh, they're called flowers. Uh, they're weak to ice, so let's use that on them. Uh, the orc orcs in the middle there, they are strong against ice, so don't use it on them. There we go. How we can put robots to sleep... Oh, right, well, you can put a computer to sleep. I was going to say, how you can do that, I don't know, but uh, apparently you can in this game. But, yeah, you can put computers to sleep. Duh. I didn't know magic would work on them like that, but, well, there you are. By the way, I was t talking about how uh, Orc Orcs have elemental protection there. Uh, the, re the way elemental protection works in this game compared to other, game other games in the series, and they finally realized this, that, um, what is it? It doesn't give you perfect protection. Like in previous games, if you were strong against ice, uh, ice attacks would not deal any damage to you. In this game, I, I think it just cuts it in half. So, you know, it's not nearly as obscenely powerful as it was in previous games. But still, it's, it's worth going after, but just don't expect perfect protection like in previous games there. Let's see, we almost got these guys. I'm probably going to want to heal after this one, but uh, that's okay. Yeah, got him. We could use some good gold in levels, so uh, I'm going to take a moment to heal up and be right back. Okay, we're all set and ready to go. Just so you know, the Cure 1 spell, it restores 30% of your maximum HP. So, uh, regardless of whether it's a human or mutant or anyone casting it. So that's pretty nice. It's pretty fixed there. Uh, the turtles there on the left, they are weak to ice, so we want to take them out and spread out our attacks like that. There we go. By the way, uh, in the last episode, uh, regarding Myron's equipment, when I was talking about that, um, what is it? Oh yeah, um, I didn't buy anything for him because he basically has everything he needs. That's what they do with the fifth characters. They basically give you everything they need in order to get by as long as they're in your party. Uh, same thing goes with their levels. Myron's at level five, but he's never going to gain a level uh, because uh, that's just how the fifth characters work. So they, they already come with the levels, experience, equipment, basically almost everything they need for the most part. Later in the game, my fifth characters, I may want to start giving them some things, but for now, not really worried about Myron too much. You can't even give spells to your fifth characters or remove them, which is kind of bad. Uh, you can't remove their equipment either, which is why I was mentioning that trick about removing Myron's battle axe earlier there. Uh, let's see. Nah, I don't want to eat any meat right now. Monsters, or any other job class at this point in the game, kind of sucks, really. Get the shell spell there. Yeah, shell uh, boosts your physical defense by 10. It's not worth it at all, so that's why I didn't buy it earlier. And by the way, uh, jumping around an area, uh, even like right here, when you're not jumping over anything, it can help you to avoid random encounters because you're taking one less step uh, since you're skipping a step there. So if you want to do that, you can. I'm not going to because I want to get as much gold and experience as I can. But it's something that you could consider if you, if you uh, really want to do that. I'm not going to, but... You can if you want. Let's jump over here. This better be it. Yay! We get the float spell. Uh, now, I like giving uh, these what we call travel spells, uh, like float here. I like giving them to uh, my lead character just for convenience sake. So let's give that to Arthur, and now he can cast it. It costs zero MP, so that's pretty nice there. Let's heal up a little bit and uh, make our way out of here then. Maybe I can show off a few new enemies. Yeah, let's just go down there. Crap. I gotta take the long way around. Yeah, that's how those pits work there. Okay, we made it out of here, so let me just take a moment to heal up more and be right back. 
Okay, we're all set and ready to go. Except for these monsters in my way. Yeah, I suppose I can uh, show them off. Ravens, they're weak to fire, but again, not really pertinent because, uh, well, uh, Myron can one-shot them. Even though he has the fire spells, it's kind of odd. It's odd that they give humans any, like, attack magic at all, because humans are just, like, not really good at it. They don't get the magic stat, and they don't get the job class proficiency that mutants have. So, I don't know. Oh, thanks. Thanks for killing the guy that, uh, I already put to sleep. Maybe, uh, usually it's a good idea to put the guy to sleep in the lower right corner, but sprites aren't really all that much to worry about, so I didn't, but... Well, whatever. Nothing too hard to worry about here. See, we're at level 4 now, so we're doing pretty good. I uh, ran into quite a few battles there. If you're a little low on experience, you may want to try and get a little bit. Maybe get up to level 4 or 5. Let's see, we're at level 4 here. Myron's at level 5. Usually you want to get up to like the level that your 5th character is if you're like a newcomer to the game, but I'm not worried about it. So let's cast float, so that way we can float our way to a lot. They all float. Okay, now a lot of you guys noticed this in the last episode. I can't believe how many of you guys noticed this. Uh, let's wait for it to come back around. You saw that thing that was, uh, uh, whatever, floating around the world here? Let's see, there it is. You see that? You recognize it? Yeah, yeah, that's the same floating continent sprite from uh, Final Fantasy III. We can't get there yet, even though I float, but, uh, well, uh, whatever. Okay, so let's take a look around. Maybe some people can, uh, tell me where, uh, what's that guy we were looking for? Kronos? Something like that? Oh, okay, well, we'll take a look at the magic shop. Let's see, nothing around here. They got lots of interesting stuff here, so let's, uh, make sure we get what we need. Huh, lost magic, huh? We, uh... We won't be able to make some of that stuff for quite some time. Anything interesting here? Uh, no, not really. Some more pills for robot stat boosting and uh, status recovering items. I'm not really a fan of status recovering items because most statuses um, heal at the end of a battle anyway. So I'm not really worried about that. Except for like stone and death. That's about it. Those are the only statuses that really matter. Okay, we got some new weapons here. Uh, you could you could get battle swords for your humans, but uh, you know we're gonna find some better stuff soon enough, or buy some stuff in the next town anyway. So I'm not gonna bother. It would be a good idea to get a couple psychic knives. So for the mutants, uh, anything that says PSI on it, or well, it's an abbreviation for psychic there. Uh, mutants can use it with uh, double proficiency, just like humans can use any weapon with double proficiency. So that's pretty nice for the mutants. They'll be able to deal just as much, if not more, damage than my humans for a little while. It also boosts your agility by five. See that? So that's pretty nice for mutants there because they're the ones who I want to be able to uh, have that high agility to uh, either disable an enemy or heal or do whatever you want to do before uh, you know the enemy can. So that's pretty nice there. Uh, that napalm there, it's a one-time use weapon. Not worth the money, so I wouldn't worry about it. Let's see, uh, yeah, we got quite a few things here, so I want to take a moment to uh, buy all that off screen and be right back. Okay, I've gotten everything uh, that we need here. Uh, essentially, I got four bronze gloves, four bronze boots. I didn't buy any helmets because we're going to find some that are better in the next town anyway. And I only got three plumes because we're going to find one in the next dungeon we go to. So, there you go. So let's equip that on everyone. I already equipped it on everyone except Arthur, just to show you the differences here. Bronze gloves are pretty good. Boots, eh, they're a little better. So basically for accessories, everyone should have a belt and a plume. Uh, a blue plume doesn't really provide that much more magic defense than a belt, so that's why I don't think you need two of them. But the nice thing about plume is that it's your first status protection accessory. It protects you from sleep. I don't know how that works. Uh, a, a plume is like a feather, right? Uh, I don't know how a feather is going to keep me from falling asleep. And what is it, like a rooster's feather? Something like that? Uh, I don't know. You got me on that one. But, uh, hmm, who's Master Soul? In Floatland, where's that? Hmm. 
Well, we'll keep an ear out for that, anyway. This kind of looks like the biggest house around here. Elder sent me. Memories. Well, yeah, I kind of noticed that. My intention is to rule the future! No, no, to return to the future. To, uh, save the future. What's left of it, I guess. Oh well, yeah, I've been fighting monsters this whole time. Oh, he has the, uh, past unit for the, uh, talent there. But we can't get back to the future yet. But, wh why do you want us to go to the past? What does this have anything to do with saving the future? Tune in next time when, uh... I don't think the game ever explains why we go to the past. This is H.C. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day.